How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and men and women, and boys and girls, and people? I'm Julia Sumner Miller, and physics is my business. And what is our business today? More on this thing called inertia, which has uncommon properties, extraordinary and beyond credibility. Proof. If you will come out with me here, you will see resting on the floor of this castle some paper cups. And here is an enormous block of wood that weighs about 80 pounds. Now, I am going to put that block of wood gently on those paper cups, and they support it. And now I say as follows. With this 16-pound sledgehammer and this sharpened iron wedge, I can drive this wedge into that block with absolute immunity to the cups. Why? Because the block has enormous inertia and wishes to remain at rest since it is now at rest. And I want to tell you about an adventure which, uh, to which I uh, have yielded in my younger days. Watch it. I used to lie on the lecture table. Lecture table. There I am, lying on the lecture table. And I would allow two students whose, whose, whose trustworthy was established to gently pick up that block and put it on my chest. Gently put it on, not, you know, drop it from some height, because what does Newton's first law say? If a body is moving, it wants to keep going. And then I would let them, with a heavy sledgehammer, drive that block into the, uh, drive that wedge into the block with absolute immunity to me. Proof abundant that the inertia of this block is so great as not to be moved by the blows. So you can imagine, remember imagination, that that is my chest and I am driving the wedge. Now, of course, as I said, if I lift up the block, if they lifted up the block and dropped it from a couple of feet above my chest, um, uh, Mamiya, I'd have a matter to complain about, as I will now show you. As I will now show you. That's it. And this discussion is adequate to establish the virtue of Newton's first law. A body at rest wishes to remain at rest, or if moving in a straight line, continues so. I say that is something. I say that is something. Our next adventure will have to do with images in a plane mirror. So I would ask you, until we meet again, to think of a plane mirror in front of which you put yourself, and you look there, and you see an image here. And I'll ask you to contemplate the nature of that image, where it is, what shape it is, and so on. And we will talk about images in plane mirrors. And then, more especially, the images in mirrors which are inclined to each other in some such manner. One mirror, a second mirror, and an object here. And I would remind you, if you go to a barber shop or a beauty shop, and there is a mirror in front of you and a mirror behind, do you not see successive images of your head? The question is, how many can one see? That I will explore another time.